how to use JUnit for running tests on your classes in NetBeans. We're going to start by making a new project as usual. We're just going to call it Geometry. It's going to be a very simple class because we're mostly focused on how to use the testing tools. So my class that I'm going to build is a class for a square, the shape with equal sides. And all I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually implement the square class yet. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use test-driven development. This isn't the only methodology for testing that you can use with JUnit, but we're going to use it for this tutorial. So we're just going to write down the specification of the class first. So this is what is the class going to do? What are the public methods? So we're going to say that you can create a square. So there's a constructor that takes a length of sides. We're going to say that a square will give you its area. And just to make the compiler happy, we're going to return a default value to, to begin with. That's obviously not the right implementation. And let's do one more thing and give it a set side length method to change the sides of the square. All right, so this is a specification of class. It's just saying what can it do. So now I'm going to make sure my class is selected and what we're going to do is generate a test class for square. So we can go down to tools and create tests. So NetBeans already picks a lot of these options for us. Usually these are the ones that I like to have. There's a bunch of different things that JUnit can create for you, but for now we're not going to have it automatically create anything except the most basic skeleton. All right, so here is our testing class. It's going to be a separate class. And you can see that automatically it's already going to be importing some of JUnit libraries. JUnit is going to just be a library that provides some useful testing functions. Because we're going to use test-driven development, what that means is we want to create tests that are going to break right now, but uh, the goal will be to fix those tests by implementing new features in the Square class. You just want to write uh, code that you would typically put in a main function if you're writing your tests without JUnit, but we're just putting it in here. So I need to create a new square. Let's give it a side length. Ultimately, all we want to check is whether the area method is going to give us the right output. So here we would expect the area to be four, and the actual value that we get is going to be the results of calling the area method on s. All right, so now we just have to compare them and cause an error to be raised if they're not equal. So this is where JUnit comes in handy again. It has a bunch of these assert methods. So we're just going to use one called assert equals. It just takes two objects or values and compares if they're equal. All right. So let's see what happens when we run our tests. So once we fill in our test, the way we can run it is clicking on the original class that we're testing. Right click, go to test file. All right, so JUnit ran and it's giving us a report down here. Red means that we failed our test. So we can look in here to see what happened. Ah, it's actually saying use assert equals with this extra delta argument to compare floating point numbers. Ah, JUnit's kind of helping us out here. Uh, it's actually a bad idea to compare doubles to each other or floating point numbers to each other. We should always compare them within some precision because we can never be sure we should really be comparing them exactly. So let's give it some tolerance. So let's test again, see what happens. All right, that original error went away, but now we're getting, okay, failed. We got uh, a zero, but we were expecting a four. Okay, this, this is what we expected because we haven't actually implemented the area function yet. So 
now in test driven development we've created our test we've seen that it runs but it fails so now we can go back to our class and actually implement the area method so we want it to return the length squared so there's a little bit more we have to implement here we need to actually have a field probably should set that in the constructor all right and now we can implement area so it's just side length squared all right so let's test our class again and see if things are okay yeah so we this is a good sign from JUnit. It says that tests finished successfully for our project. Let's take a look. Yeah, so we have this nice green bar. It says everything is passed. Okay, great. So what you would want to do now, same idea. We want to implement the set side length test. It should fail at first because we haven't implemented the, the length method. And we'll go through the same process. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully this is enough for you to at least get running with JUnit.